Thanks. I'm Ed Tang. I'm the founder and CTO of Avagant. And today, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, how we can enable new mixed reality experiences with light field technologies and why light field technology is so important and critical for the future of you know, AR, VR, mixed reality. Um, but first, I want to start a little bit from the beginning. You know, when I started this company about four and a half years ago, we always had this vision about where these devices were going. You know, we've already seen devices that moved from the desktop PC to the, to the laptop notebooks, and now we're seeing things move to the smartphones, which is pretty ubiquitous these days. But I think the next revolution over the next five years or 10 years, we're going to see a major shift from the mobile phone to wearable devices. And I think that uh, it's really exciting to be part of this journey. And all of us here in this room are right at the very beginning of this infancy of this, of this, uh, uh, of this journey. I think there's a lot of really exciting things that are about to happen over the next couple of years, stuff that we're working on, stuff the rest of the industry is working on. So it's really interesting to see how this, all this stuff comes together. But to go back a little bit about how we got started, how uh, Avagon got started initially, it was all around trying to reimagine new experiences with new display technologies. You know, my background actually comes from the MEM space, particularly around biomedical spaces, you know, trying to take new cutting edge microelectronics, micro devices, and trying to make them more compatible with the human body. You know, we did really crazy things like, um, like neuromodulation, sensing, and stimulation. I was implanting stuff into people's brains and spinal cords, stuff that sounds crazy, but, but actually is, uh, has a lot of really great applications these days. And when we were starting to look at the display space, we took a very similar approach, is how do we make displays that are more compatible with your eyes? You know, trying to focus on human physiology. I think this is going to be a very, very uh, big trend going forward on how to create the best experiences. And when you looked at the display technologies that, out, that were out there, we, you know, we're familiar with things like LCD screens, OLED panels. And basically, we thought that you know, taking a screen like this and strapping it to your face, you could really only get so far with that type of experience. So we need to start, it, we need to start essentially from the ground up. So from the very get-go, we started thinking, how is it that we naturally see? You know, when I look around this room, you guys aren't glowing, you guys aren't panels, you guys aren't pixelated, right? When I see you out in the, in the audience, you guys are, it's light reflecting off of you coming into my eyes from a different source, right? So trying to more closely mimic that process was a good first step. So what we did was, we actually got rid of that screen. We started with a simple, low-powered, three-color LED. We sent that light through our patented optics to shape that light in the way that we wanted to. And then we modulated that light with a fully digital micro-mirror array. In this case, we have several million tiny micro-mirrors that are picking and choosing which colors of light to directly project onto your retina. It sounds kind of scary, right? But it's actually, if you actually try this technology, uh, you'll see that it's uh, really quite vivid and quite comfortable for your, for your eyes. We found that there were some really incredible advantages right off the bat based on this technology that we call retinal imaging technology. The first thing that we see is it's incredibly high resolution and incredibly vivid. And that is, that's because fundamentally we have a very different display architecture, right? When you think about um, traditional displays today, LCD and OLED panels, you, you know the, the displays you carry in your pocket have a lot of pixels, right? And in every one of those pixels, you, all, you may also know they're also sub-pixels. So if you blow up one of these pixels, there's a little tiny red, green, and blue smaller pixel in there. But what's interesting about the current pixel structures that we know is that the actual area that's being used by these subpixels is really low. So if you actually magnify that, that, that screen, you're going to see these RGB subpixels. And typically, these subpixels of color only take it about uh, roughly about 10% of the total area. So when you think, when you're looking at the screen you know, on your phone or strapped to your head, typically between 70 and 90% of that screen is literally just black. Right? And that's one of the reasons why when you magnify those images, you see screen door effects, right? You see a lot of pixelation. It's because there isn't a lot of signal there. There's just a lot of black areas. And with our core display technology, using the micromirror projection technology, we're getting 90% fill factor for every single color. So what that results in is an incredibly high upscaling of resolution without needing to add any more pixels. Taking the same signal we had um, that whatever source you're putting out, and actually delivering a much higher resolution to your eyes. This is a really great benefit that's going to be important as we go forward. Um, the other thing is, without relying on the specific material properties of, an, say, an organic LED, for example, uh, we're able to get much, much better performance, much lower latency, you know, significantly faster than eight milliseconds, eight seconds of, uh, mil of uh, latency, 
and able to run at incredibly high frame rates, hundreds, even up to 1,000 frames per second. It gets pretty interesting some of the stuff you can do with, uh, with that kind of performance. And we knew from the get-go as we planned that you know, the roadmap of these devices eventually moving toward you know, these type of mixed reality transparent devices, we needed this, this technology to be very versatile. Thankfully, we were very successful in shipping this product and this technology. You may have seen this product before in the market. We've been shipping the Glyph for over a year. Uh, quite successful product. We've won quite a few awards, including the official CS Awards. We were named one of Oprah's favorite things uh, for Christmas last year, which was, which was pretty cool. We're not doing an Oprah moment right now, but. <laughs> uh, we're even the Jimmy Fallon show, which is pretty cool. There's Jimmy seeing the future. And a lot of people, uh, you can see reviews on things like Amazon, people talking about the technology being just a stunning technology, stunning display experience, zero pixelation, zero screen door effects, which is really quite refreshing uh, when you think about um, uh, some of the displays that we're all used to seeing today. And with that, some of the most valuable things that we take away going forward is the maturity of the technology, right? Not just having a, a, a science project or, or a research prototype, is actually being, being able to know how to take brand new cutting edge display technologies and taking them to mass market, knowing how to produce them, understanding the quality control, the manufacturing challenges, the supply chain, working with your suppliers and your CMs, your contract manufacturers. And here's just a little clip of, uh, of you know, this is actually our, our optics assembly line that we work with our contract manufacturers on. So that's, that's pretty interesting going forward because so few companies actually, you know, not, not just large companies uh, or small companies, so few companies actually understand the challenges around building products in large volumes, you know, understanding the quality issues and supply issues. That's a really big challenge going forward. Um, that's something that uh, we're quite proud of. But moving on to something a little bit more relevant uh, for this audience, um, besides the core display technology, is there's been a lot of excitement about some of the work we're doing these days around the light field space. And I think a lot of people um, probably have heard the term light field, maybe don't quite, quite understand what light field means. But I want to go through a little bit um, about the technology and explain to you why is this critical for our space. You know, we think that it'll be, it's very difficult, maybe even impossible, to be able to ship mass market mixed reality products if you don't have light field simply because it's such a limiting experience. And I'll walk through a couple of different examples. You know, we've all probably, hopefully, have tried some of the AR products out in the market today. And what you find is that things that are far away generally look OK. But the second that you actually reach out and try to hold something in your hand is where the whole experience falls apart. You know, we've probably seen stuff like this, where if I put my hand out and try to have an object sitting in the palm of my hand, what you notice is that with today's technology, without light field technology, I can focus on my hand. And when you do, the object looks, it looks wrong. When I focus on the object, it can look clear. But then the world around it, the hand underneath it, looks incorrect. And that's simply because the focus of that object doesn't match the focus of the real world around that. And I'm going to get a little bit about, I'm going to dive in a little bit more about how we see depth. But let me first explain to some of the audience here, people who don't quite understand necessarily what convergence and what accommodation is, right? There's a lot of different ways that we see depth, and I'll walk through some of the different ways. But the two that are really critical, I think, for this application is what we call convergence and accommodation. So what a convergence is, is basically the angle of your eyes. You know? So if I look at my finger, for example, and I bring this way close to my eyes, you notice my eyes are pointing in. Right? This is the convergence angle of my eyes. But even with a single eye, I can focus at different points. Right? So if I close one eye and I put my finger up, I can focus on my finger. It's nice and clear. And you're out of focus. Vice versa, if I look at you guys, you guys are clear. And the finger's out of focus. Right? These two things, accommodation and convergence, are very tightly coupled together. This is how we develop our binocular vision as kids. And when these are broken apart without, by, by not having light field, things start acting really funny. Right? You see kind of stuff like that. And at the end of the day, what really happens is you get either very unrealistic overlay or you get really uh, you know, visual discomfort, especially up close. And there's some really good scientific reasons behind this, right? And I think vision science is something that has been well understood for several decades. But if you bear with me just for a couple minutes, I want to walk through a little bit of data here. So uh, this, this cover is a little bit about like, uh, how we see depth, some of the depth cues that we have. If we break up the world into three different distances, our personal space, which is up close, and other spaces that are farther away, you can see that there are a variety of different depth cues that we have. Right? There's occlusion, there's relative size of objects, there's a par motion parallax between far and near objects. But the one that I just pointed out to you before was accommodation and convergence down in this corner. And what you notice is that this space becomes really critical to be correct if, you're, if you want to operate in this couple of meter range. Right? Basically, anything up close 
having that accommodation, the focus, and the convergence of those objects in mixed reality becomes really critical. Well, what does this mean today when you don't have light field displays? Well, it's also really well understood what happens when these things are mismatched, when this doesn't match in your vision, right? How do we tolerate error between focus and convergence? Well, if we think about the real world, the real world is perfect. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. You know, if I'm looking at something that's a meter away, I'm also focused at a meter away. Everything is perfect, everything lines up, right? But it's also well understood this comfort zone is how far off can you be while still feeling visually comfortable for your eyes. And you can see that when you're beyond about a meter, the comfort zone is very large. And this is where I'd say most VR experiences are happening today, right? But in AR, or mixed reality, you notice that there's a significant problem when you get less than about one meter space. And this is a really big problem. When you think about what type of experiences you, that you want to enable in this space, regardless if you're thinking about enterprise space or consumer space, right? Anything that happens within about one meter, I'm telling you that without light field, you actually can't properly show that. It actually is a big problem, right? So we have very little tolerance, very, very little tolerance for, uh, for error in this submeter space. And our solution is we take, we take a multifocal plane approach to generate simultaneous multifocal planes for your eyes to generate this image so that we can put objects at variable focal distances all at the same time, which means I can have an object very close to me, an object farther away from me, and they all match up perfectly. Right? And this results in an incredibly realistic and visually comfortable experience. Um, and you guys, I think some of you may have tried our technology, but certainly I encourage you to go do a search. And when that's correct, you end up with an experience like this, where I put my hand out and I can see an actual object sitting in my hand, and it looks like it's actually sitting in my hand, right? And I look out into the distance and actually can see another object off in the distance. And my eyes can very naturally focus back and forth between these two or more virtual objects. It feels like they're real objects, and it feels like I can naturally focus between these two points, just like the real world does. What that means is we can really enable a lot of the type of experiences that we imagine when we think about this industry and where this is going. You know, I think a lot about uh, when I'm on the road, being able to have a virtual telephone call with my daughter and having her right in front of me or next to me and be able to interact with her and do things with her hands together, right? These are things that we want to do that we can't do without light field technologies. Same thing with a user interface. You know, we've all seen user interfaces that are far away, you know, pinned to walls, you're remotely clicking on things, but you want to be able to reach out and touch a user interface. You know, I think just like what Rachel was saying before, being able to reach out and interact with objects becomes a really compelling experience that we need to have in this industry in order to be able to fulfill the promises of where we think the technology is going. Right? Interacting with, uh, with objects, interacting with user interfaces, seeing things that are overlaid onto, onto, onto tables right in front of us, or reaching out and touching things with our hands. These are really critical things that I think we all are going to need. Talking a little bit more about the core technology itself, uh, unfortunately I can't divulge too much about it, but uh, a couple things I want to point out. Um, when you see some of our technology that we're showing, uh, the light field technology that we're showing, I want to point out that the stuff that we're showing today is at full resolution. In fact, we're approaching your retinal resolution today of one arc minute per, per, uh, per pixel, which is really fantastic. No pixelation, no screen door effects, even readable crystal clear text. That's really important to you. Um, full color, full resolution, full frame rate. Uh, the technology we developed, the approach that we've created, this new light field, is actually a very mature approach, which is really exciting. That means that we're going to be able to move into market in high volumes pretty quickly, so stay tuned. Um, and it doesn't require crazy rendering power. You know, we don't require things like a supercomputer or a server rack to drive a frame every you know, few hundred milliseconds. We're running things in real time today, not only on PCs, but also running on mobile chipsets, such as Snapdragon and, and even Tegra. Uh, I want to show you a little video clip that's kind of fun. I haven't shown anyone this yet. But this is a, a, a video of my four-year-old daughter actually wearing uh, one of our earlier prototypes. And it's actually kind of funny. She's walking around this room. And what she's seeing here is she's seeing fish. The room is full of fish. And she's looking at these fish up close. And she's reaching out. And she wants to grab these fish because it feels so realistic to her. Right? And that's, uh, I thought it was, it was really cute. <laughs> and she's saying, you can't hear them, but she's saying, I feel them, but they're not really there, right, is, is what she's saying. Uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I think it's going to be wild. Like, she's going to grow up in a really, really strange, strange world. But, but um, you know, it's, it's uh, showing 3D objects to children is actually a whole other challenge, too. But being able to have kids 
and, and people like us see these objects seem so realistic in front of you that you feel compelled to reach out and touch things. In fact, some of the demos that we do, people even report, they put their hand out and they actually can feel a sensation in their hand. Like in your mind, things start perceptually, start, start feeling more and more realistic. And that's what's really exciting about um, getting ever so closer to a more realistic experience, a more realistic displays, and having things really converge around this. And that's pretty exciting. And, and um, you know, to sum things up, why life feels required is because it's required for the experiences that we all demand, right? I think that the, the, the mixed reality space is not going to really take off in the way that we want it to if we're limited to experiences that are a meter or a couple meters away. You know, we want to be able to reach out, interact with things, touch things, hold things, have things that are over, you know, virtual objects overlaid into the real world. This is how we're going to get the type of experiences that, that we need. And with the last few seconds here, um, I want to, I want to just uh, kind, of, kind of quickly not talk about what we're doing, but a little bit about the industry itself. You know, I think what's really exciting is that we've seen kind of what's happened in the smartphone space. A lot of kind of people will kind of lose, use this type of analogy. And this is, this is about where we are right now. And I think it's really exciting to see, you know, we're not quite there yet. You know, we don't have a product yet that, that, that has the type of volumes of, of, of a brick phone with a floppy antenna, but we're almost there. And I think uh, pretty soon we're going to see a lot of products in the space that, that are going to be like that, right? Probably a little bit bigger, a little bit bulkier, but has the function that we needed to, to, to provide, right? But what's really exciting, I think, is now that we're, we're, we're getting over this first hump, I see, we're starting to see a clear vision, a clear line to that point. And that's what, start, that's what uh, we're really excited about, you know, solving the light field issue, solving a lot of the other issues, a lot of other system level things that are all coming together. It's really exciting to see. I think that is within reach now. You know, I think if we were there, I think now we see where things are going. And that's what's really exciting. And I feel a sense of excitement. And I feel really excited about the type of things that are going to start to be able to be experienced and enabled. Uh, regardless if you're a consumer or an enterprise space, you know, new experiences, productivity, content, gaming, all this great new technology. But I will say, um, I, I, <laughs> as things start to grow, I'm starting to get, to get beyond the sense of, like, can we do it? Now I'm thinking, okay, now this is really happening. Oh, crap. Like, how are we actually going to use this technology? And I start to get really worried. So, so I want to end this, this talk by saying, I want to be a little bit cautious, right? A little bit of cautious excitement, right? Because there's a lot of really positive things and, you know, I think we talk about this theme about superpowers, and I would think, you know, I think this said before earlier, but with great powers, you know, we have to be uh, uh, very responsible with what we do. There's a lot of questions, I think, both from the developer, hardware creators, as well as consumers, that we need to be very careful about what we're doing with things like our privacy and user data. These things, these devices are going to know way more about us than any of our smartphones and computers ever had. In fact, they may even know our intents without, without us actually doing anything, and that gets kind of scary. So I think as, as um, hardware and software manufacturers and application manufacturers, we want to make sure we're doing good. And I think as consumers, we want to make the right choices too, right? I think it's important for you guys to look at companies like us and say, where is the, where is the money going? Follow the money, right? Our companies and our software companies and platform companies really using this for our benefit. Um, but I'm cautiously very excited about where things are. Thank you very much.